Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and this time we're focused on focal length. Focus is here because really understanding your camera makes you a better photographer. We've all heard terms like wide angle lenses, telephoto and zoom lenses, but what's really going on and how do we know what to expect from our lenses? Lens names are usually descriptions that let us know what we should expect to see in our field of view, along with what the maximum opening is that the lens has to let in light. So a lens with a description or a name like 24 to 105 millimeter f4 is one that has a zoom range starting at 24 millimeters and that can zoom in to 105 millimeters. That f4 part of the name is just telling you what the maximum aperture is for the lens. So let's look a little more closely at those millimeter numbers. No, not like that. Those millimeter numbers are only part of the equation though that tell you what you can expect to see in your final image. You also need to know what camera that lens is mounted on so that you know about the sensor size. We call the combination of millimeter measurement and the sensor size the angle of view and you'll also hear the term field of view. So let me throw a few more terms at you that are all pieces of this puzzle. There's full frame, there's crop factor, there's approximate human vision, there's compression, and optical stabilization. As we go through examples of what you can expect to see with a wide angle or medium or a telephoto lens, we're gonna show you examples from a camera that has a full frame sensor. Now that means that the sensor is essentially the same size as a 35 millimeter film negative. The same lens on a different camera would potentially have a different field of view, but there's a whole focused video about crop factor. For now, we're just gonna talk about focal length in terms of a full frame camera. For starters, you'll occasionally hear people mention normal human vision can be approximated by a 50 millimeter lens field of view. How can you even sleep at night knowing how terrible you've misled photography students everywhere? Sure, 40 or 50 millimeters is close to what we normally see in the sharp area of our central vision, but you've totally ignored the less clear but occasionally still relevant peripheral aspects of our vision. And what about people who wear glasses? And my mom, she has a glass eye. What about her? You're just rude. Of course, human vision has all kinds of nuances that make it unlike what a camera sees, but I'm just trying to give you a feel for what you might expect to see in an image snapped with a 50 millimeter lens. A lens with a fixed focal length is called a prime lens, and one that zooms is called a zoom lens. Wide angle lenses and ultra wide angle lenses like fisheye lenses can get so wide sometimes that they distort straight lines just to fit them into that image area. Then when you're in the 40 millimeter to 75 or 80 millimeter range, you get images that feel like they're kind of normal. When you go past that though, which is zooming or telephoto, you start to bring distant objects closer than normal human vision, and you also narrow the field of view. One cool thing you'll notice is how changing the focal length will change how close the background appears to be. So here's one easy experiment you can do with your zoom lens. Start by taking a portrait at the wide end of your zoom, take a step back, zoom in a little bit so that your subject is about the same size in the frame, then do it again, take a step back, Zoom in a little bit, make sure the subject's the same size, and what you'll notice is that the subject stays the relative same size in the frame, but the background gets closer. That's compression. One other thing I should mention is that zooming a lens or using a lens with a longer focal length, like 200 millimeters or 300 millimeters or more, will amplify normal handshake. Pictures can turn out blurry because a little hand movement means big movement in the distance. One way to counteract that is to use a tripod to really steady the camera. What about if I don't have a tripod? Wouldn't it be cool if the lens can feel when the camera's shaking and somehow counteract for that? Yeah, they sure can. Lots of modern lenses have some sort of image stabilization or vibration compensation built into the lens so they steady the shots. They have some of the lens elements mounted on special little mounts inside the lens barrel and then those move to counteract your hand motion. That wraps it up for this episode of Focus. Focus is made possible thanks to B&H, Kelby One, and these nice people. If you have questions for us, leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe because we don't want you to miss a single episode. We'll see you next time.